boy in the harem. Story of a young boy, Mahito, learning to embrace the cycle of life. I guess. I think. Possibly. It starts off very in your face with Mahito learning of the local hospital being on fire. His mother worked in there. So with no time to waste, we watched Mahito frantically get dressed and sprint towards the hospital. A blur of bodies, smoke, and sirens flash as we watch from Mahito's perspective until finally we are almost engulfed in flames. Hearing his mother's voice, this shit is fucking insane. Mahito narrates, I'm assuming, their departure from Tokyo after his mother's death and their arrival at the family estate where he meets his aunt, Natsuko and the housekeepers. The shots from the first 20-30 minutes on the estate, specifically when they mention Mahito's father's factory, they pan to the field, cutting the frame right before we see the factory. And there also are another set of absolutely insanely creative shots and framing in Miyazaki's approach to showing the heron. But the heron, we, we just, we have to start somewhere. And why not start with the unlikely friend and guide? the lion gray hair. I genuinely loved and hated every part of the hair. And I think that was the kind of the point, maybe, possibly. He was a disgusting little man, disguised as a hair, I think. And anyways, Mahito, being a curious little shit, decides to go wandering off and discovers a whole ass medieval uh, looking tower right on the estate. Curiosity took over as the encounters with the hair and his dreams of his mother drew him in once he noticed gray heron feathers inside the top. Unable to squeeze through a small crack in the tower's collapsed entrance and being called back by Kiriko and some of the other housekeepers, Natsuko explains to Mahito that evening that his great-granduncle built said tower and was a genius who went insane and disappeared. Okay, for sure. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is where the edible kicked, so if I get the order of things wrong, might be, but yeah, shit gets real creepy with the heron smiling terrifyingly outside of Mahito's window while he's sleeping, talking to him in dreams. In real life, hundreds of frogs summon to encase Mahito in a suit of frogs until an arrow from Natsuko scared the heron away, meaning all the frogs also disappeared. It was it. Realizing the power of keeping that thing on, Mahito plotted on building out his own bow with cigarettes, a nail, bamboo, dough, and a heron feather. This time, the heron ain't fucking around. With the promise of reuniting Mahito with his believed-to-be past mother, luring Mahito and Kiriko willingly but terrified following into the forest after Natsuko disappeared into it, Mahito and Kiriko discover almost a castle-like structure. There, Kiriko begins to finally warn Mahito of the bloodline curse and the voices only they can hear as descendants of his great-granduncle. Entering the castle anyways, because fuck it, why not? A giant door shut behind them. Typical shit, but I loved older Kiriko knowing it was a trap from jump. In retrospect, this is probably exactly what happened with Mahito's mother when she disappeared as a child, which they tell us about later in the movie. For a year inside, the voice of the heron stokes the fire, leading the two into a large room with the heron inside and a figure lying facing away from us on a couch. The heron is exposed as Mahito touches his creation and it fucking turned into liquid. That shit was real demonic. I did not, I was, that was, that was real interesting to watch that shit just like melt. Terrifying, Mahito. But the heron then dared an understandably angry Mahito to shoot blow that bitch. The feather Mahito happened to use was the special flight seven feather or some, but it I I guess it just it gave Mahito auto -in. So that shit flew clean through the whole ass uh, Heron's beak and the Gandalf looking motherfucker then instructs the nasty bird man to be Mahito's guide. Okay. To where? Well, then they start descending through the floor as if it was quicksand, but the shit is water. Mahito finds himself eventually after falling through something in front of in front of a golden giant golden gate faced up against waterfront on all sides. Mahito, drawn in by a voice, approaches the gate where he is pushed in from behind by a swarm of fucking yelling pelicans, screaming pelicans. A young Kiriko arrives at the perfect time though to save him, escaping the death island or whatever, walking backwards. It, it's a whole thing. They have to like draw a circle. It, it's very interesting. I would really love to know more about this, but anyways. Escaping the island, Kiriko and Mahito go to fish, okay? Well, they're fishing to feed the Wada Wada. Essentially, babies preparing to be born. A lot is thrown at you with the Wada Wada, ascending to new life. Uh, Himi, a pyrokinetic young woman, attacks pelicans, trying to 
eat the Warwana? Like, what the fuck? Which is also when we later meet and, and Mahito speaks with a pelican injured by Himi's fire. The pelican explains the, the situation of the the pelicans saying that they were placed there in this world with no food and just some weird ass shit going on and oh my god wow the parakeet kingdom the parakeet kingdom is something else uh watching a bunch of very large parakeet pair to eat two young children that's a sentence that's a sentence right there this shit gets real confusing for me though from here uh, the whole delivery room scene where natsuko says all that and he was calling natsuko his mother uh, i was super lost I'm not going to, but anyways, uh, he escapes the delivery room with the paper and then him, he like lights a fire uh, to free all of them. And then they all get knocked unconscious and Mahito in a dream meets Gandalf, who turns out to be his great grand uncle, uh, the creator and custodian of this world. His great grand uncle asks Mahito to succeed him. Mahito, 12 year old, that day, a fucking 12 year old. Pretty sure is suspicious skeptical of the possibility of malice in the fucking blocks of creation his great grand uncle is toying with offering to him a hidden burden waking up being prepped like meat on a meat rack mahito is freed by the heron climbing the tower chasing after the parakeet king and it captured him apparently we're getting real bird law in this bitch uh, because as supposedly Himi and Mahito's actions at the delivery room, at an in the delivery room, was an infraction of the greatest degree of the Parakeet Kingdom law. But yeah, a whole bunch of stuff happens. I thought Mahito was dead for a second with the whole she slice of, of the bridge, but anyways. It all starts to end in a weirdly high pressure scene with the Parakeet King, Mahito, Himi, the Heron, and Gandalf. But Mahito's great grand uncle offers him a handful of replacement blocks for him to mold without malice, supposedly. Mahito again denies his offer, pointing out his self inflicted scar on his head from earlier in the movie as an example of how the malice is in him as well, making it impossible to create a world which is perfect in all eyes. Parakeet King, the whole time, is pissed as hell at the fact that his whole kingdom, whole world, is all set and based on some blocks. And not even like some Lego blocks either. It's not even complicated like that. It's literally just some, some baby blocks blocks some preschool blocks some rectangles and squares and circles and triangles pyramids whatever the fuck so he just slices them and every fucking thing begins to crumble the world mahito's great grand uncle built falls apart as everyone escapes and departs through the tower door of their respective times parakeets return to regular size mahito and heron and natsuko make their way back himi heads back to her time and as mahito and the heron make their way back the heron warns mahito to forget this experience but mahito keeping a block from the island resembles his unwillingness to ever let go of those who molded him into who he is or something i don't know please tell me what this movie means outside of the central like idea that death and birth and the cycle of life is a process and something to accept and something to respect what does this movie mean or is this just a a, a goddamn no finale is this a goddamn crescendo is this is this the peak is this the zenith of of the craziness of studio ghibli because it it might be it might. but i'll see y'all peace